Verse 13 and 14. It says, For you formed me, for you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, God made us all different. And the reason God made us so different is because He doesn't need repeats. He doesn't need me to be like Pastor Steve. He doesn't need Pastor Steve to be like some other pastor. He wants us to be us. That's why he made us the way he made us. 
God don't need no repeats. He don't need another T.D. Jakes. He don't need another Jensen Franklin. You know, he don't need another copycat. He needs you to be you. Uh, one time when David was young, uh, we went to Kings Island. And David was probably eight or nine years old, maybe 10. He wasn't very old. And uh, I used to love riding roller coasters. You know, I used to love riding all the rides. But over the years, I'd gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, I was quite a bit bigger then even than I am now. And I wasn't sure that I could ride, you know, those rides anymore. So David wanted to ride the beast. He's like, Dad, I want to ride the beast. I want to ride the beast. So I'm like, all right, we'll get in line. We'll ride the beast. So we get up there, and there's a, there's a thing there that if you're this tall, you can ride the beast. So I was plenty tall enough. <laughs> but, but there was nothing there that said if you're this round, you probably should not ride the beast. <laughs> and as I'm walking up these ramps, I don't know if you're familiar with Kings Island, but there's a lot of ramps. And you walk up a ramp, and then you go down this way, and then you go this way. And the closer I got to this little cart, the more I realized I was not going to fit in this little cart. <laughs> but there was something inside of me that, that by the time I got to that point, there was no turning back. You know, I wasn't, I, I wasn't going to do the walk of shame, you know, back, you know, all the way through the line. And then I even seen people, they would, they would walk through the cart and then walk on the other side and walk down the ramp. Well, I wasn't going to leave Dave there riding all by himself. So we get up there and we get up to the front of the line. Of course, Dave wants to ride in the front. You know, he wants to ride in the front cart. And uh, so we get up there, and I sit down in the, in the cart, you know, and my legs are just right up against the, the very front of the cart, and, you know, because I have long legs. That was a joke. Y'all speak English. <laughs> I don't have long legs. But I was sitting here, and, 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 you know, I got in the cart, and I sat down, and I thought, well, this isn't that bad. You know, this, this is going to be okay. So I try to pull that bar down, and that bar gets right about my chest level. And Dave is like this far beneath the bar. So uh, I got it down there as far as I could, and I was like, I don't know, I don't know if it's going to work or not. So we get this little attendant, and he comes by. So he starts pushing on this bar, and uh, you know, of course, I'm sucking it in very best I can suck it in. You know, I'm sucking in this gut, and I'm trying not to breathe. So he pushes in, and it clicks. And I'm like, oh, we're good. You know, it's, this is good. So, uh, so I give him the thumbs up, I give the guy the thumbs up, and he's like, no, he said, it's got to click twice. Oh, no. I'm like, this thing ain't going to click twice. <laughs> so, so he's like, he's like, how bad do you want to ride this ride? And I was like, oh, buddy, I've been standing in line for three hours, I've spent $600, I want to ride this ride. So he takes his foot, and he puts it on that bar, and he goes, <laughs> and it clicks again, and I go, thumbs up, and he sends it down the line. So we. Can, we start going down the thing, and when I'm going down the hill, you know, it's not that bad, you know, because everything's going forward. So then when I start going up the hill, all this comes back on my lungs and on my esophagus. So as I'm going up the hill, I can't breathe. You know, I'm like, just praying, God, let me live through this ride. And then when I get to the top of the hill and start going down, then everything kind of releases again. And, you know, so you have moments of breathing and then not breathing and then breathing and not breathing all throughout this ride. And this ride, whenever I looked it up, it only lasts like three minutes. It seemed like days <laughs> that I was in this cart riding around this wooden track. I don't know if you're familiar with the King's Island Beast or whatever, but it's made out of wood. It was made like 100 years ago, and it's shaking and vibrating. So we got to a point where we was, we was going around these curves and, and everything, and I, I got to where I could kind of breathe. I kind of, you know, was pacing myself. So I thought, well, shoot, I'll just raise my arms like the rest of them. You know, Dave, he's screaming over here. It's the greatest time of his life. So I'm, I'm raising my arms going into the tunnel, and it does this big whip. Like it just whipped sideways. And when it did, it almost slung me out of the cart, and I heard, and I was like, oh, you know, I, I think I broke something. <laughs> so, so we get out. We get to the end and the, the bar comes up and we get out and I'm struggling to get down the ramp and Jennifer's sitting down there. Tater was a baby, like he was just new, you know, he was a baby. So she's like, how was it? And Tater's like, oh, it was the greatest ride of my life. It was wonderful. And Jennifer's like, how was it? And I was like, I gotta sit down. <laughs> I need a break, get me something to drink. Get me some caffeine and sugar. So I sit there and, and I felt like that I had broken a rib or something, you know? I mean, it was just very painful. So then years later, fast forward to, to last year, and uh, I broke a bunch of stuff. 
And uh, they're doing these x-rays and they're like, well, on your left side, it looks like you broke these ribs at one time. I'm like, yeah, I remember that pretty well. <laughs> so, so I said all that to say I was trying to fit in somewhere that I had no business fitting in. I had no business getting in that cart because I knew when I went there, I couldn't fit in it. And uh, yet I forced myself on this cart. You know, I forced myself to fit there one, because I wanted to please somebody. I wanted to fit in this so I could please somebody. David. You know, I wanted to please him. Yeah, he wants to ride this ride. I want to ride it with him. So I, I tried to fit into something that I shouldn't have fit in so I could please somebody. And two, I tried to fit in it because I didn't want to be embarrassed. You know, I didn't want to be the one that walked away. Oh, I bet that fat guy can't fit in that cart. That's why he's going down the ramp. So I wanted to fit in it not to be embarrassed you know, to be as cool as everybody else. And God made several ways for me to get out of it. You know, I could have went back down the ramp. When you get there, you know, like a woman's pregnant or if your blood pressure's high, they let you go across and go on down. There were several ways that I could have got out of that. And yet, I forced myself to fit in a position to where I shouldn't have been, where I had no business getting in that car I had no business trying to force myself into a position that I couldn't have been. And so many times in our lives, we find ourselves getting into situations, trying to fit in, trying to please other people, trying to do things that we know we have no business trying to do. Whether we can't physically do it, whether we shouldn't spiritually do it, we find ourselves trying to, to fit into to other people's ideas of what we should do. We see Moses, whenever he was in Egypt, he was born a Hebrew, yet he was raised an Egyptian. And, you know, he, he couldn't ever really fit in. He never really felt like he fit in. He seen the Egyptian guards beating a Hebrew, and he killed him and then had to run off into the desert. And then when he came back, you know, I'm sure he was torn because he was going against his Egyptian people to try to free his Hebrew people. There was a time there where he just, he didn't know where he fit in. You know, Jesus never fit into that mold that the other teachers fit in, that the Pharisees and the Sadducees of the day, they fit in a certain mold, they taught a certain way, they spoke a certain language. Jesus never fit into that mold. Jesus was 100% God and he was 100% human. You know, we think we got it tough. He never fit in that mold. And yet we, today, trying to find ourselves fitting into a mold, trying to, to fit into a certain way, try to look a certain way, try to teach a certain thing. So if I could give three pieces of advice, not only to David and Emma as new youth pastors, but to the kids as students and to the adults as adults, number one is be who God made you. Be who God made you because God chose you for this day. Be who you are. You be who you are. You be who God made you because God puts you in this position today. When you're in school and you got an older brother in school, you know, Dave, Tater had it rough. You know, Dave went to school. He never got in any trouble. You know, Tater never really got in any trouble, but, you know, he always, like, they would compare him to David or you know, when, when my sister was in school, they would compare her to me. And it's unfair. You know, it's not fair because you're who you are. So if you're a student and you're, you're going to school and you have an older brother and they're comparing you, you know, don't care. Just, just get that I don't care attitude. I am who I am. You know, God made me who I am. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Number two, question everything. Ask questions. You know, if you don't understand something, ask questions. Don't believe everything somebody says. Don't believe every fad. I've been doing this for 30 years. I've seen a lot of fads, and I've seen them come and go. You know what don't change? God. You know what don't change? Movement of the Holy Spirit. You know what don't change? Your relationship with God. All that other junk changes. Don't jump on board for every little fad that comes along because it'll come and it'll go. The third piece of advice is learn. Learn, learn, learn. You'll never win anybody 
to a Jesus you don't know anything about. You'll never win anybody to a philosophy, to a denomination, to a relationship with God that you don't know anything about. If somebody comes to you and you don't know, find out. And whether it's ask somebody that knows and then study it, because if, if you ask somebody that knows and they just tell you, don't just take what they tell you. Take what they tell you, ask them where it's at, and ask them how you can find out, learn. You'll never win anybody to a Jesus you don't know anything about. So if I give three pieces of advice, be you, question everything, and learn all you can learn. Because that's what it takes. That's what it's going to take to, to lead these young people to live a good life and to be who God wants you to be.